eight years now. Uh, before that, I was with a company called Oralex Acoustics. So I've been in uh, the the audio uh, industry in, in one way or another uh, my entire career. So um, started out at Klipsch doing, doing passive products, uh, architectural two-channel product, uh, and recently moved into the what we call connected audio, uh, which is really uh, any sort of TV sound enhancement, uh, sound bars, powered monitors we're going to talk about today. So really excited to be kind of on the, uh, the new tech side of things the last several months. So uh, thanks everyone for joining. It's exciting to be here. So we're, we're up to uh, a little over 400 people. Uh, I believe Jill mentioned, I think 1,600 people signed up. We, this is very interesting. Uh, we increased uh, our capacity as well for this. So we hope we get a lot of people. We are getting a ton of questions. But I think that we're going to be able to answer a lot of them in your part of the presentation on the front end of this. And then we'll get to the questions at the end. And I think we'll probably address some questions that maybe we didn't cover. Yeah. But, uh, and I will <laughs> remind everybody, uh, we're going to have a little toast here uh, because this is going to be light and fun. So cheers, everybody, to your refreshment as we get into some of the details about this product. Cheers. It is, uh, it's cheers. after five. Eastern time, it's after five. So, you know, five o'clock somewhere. Yeah. So everybody on the West Coast, just, you know, go with it. It's part of the deal. So, everybody. Mike, we're going to get into uh, the fives and, and cool. – what they are, what they do, what makes them special, and yeah. then of course lots of show and tell and uh, details. So let's go, let's get into it. Let me pull up uh, some graphics here. I want to kind of walk you guys through exactly the, the purpose of the fives and really what we're trying to get uh, from a product standpoint out of the fives. Now we talk about uh, how they are best in class, hands down. Three ways, best in class connectivity. Mark mentioned already, these are the first powered monitors on the market with HDMI art. Everybody loves the, uh, the form factor of a soundbar. Most importantly, people love the easy connection of a soundbar and the one remote control of a soundbar. The fives give you that hi-fi two-channel experience, that extra wide soundstage, both left and right and front to back, totally three-dimensional soundstage. But with HDMI art, it's a single cable to your TV, uh, single remote control. You can use your TV remote to control them because of HDMI CEC. Of course, Bluetooth connectivity, phono input and built-in phono preamp. So you can connect these to a turntable or digital optical if you want to uh, connect them to a Blu-ray player or use that to connect to your TV or of course, uh, analog line in. So best in class connectivity, no other powered monitor on the market comes close. Best in class acoustics. We've been doing this for 75 years. That's almost as long as Mark Cassavant has been alive. <laughs> Award winning acoustic <laughs> research. Uh, the reference premier line that a lot of you are probably familiar with. It's been winning uh, best in class awards for the last several years. We took the acoustic design principles of that reference premier. The tweeter, uh, the horn geometry, that's all loaded into the five. So you're getting that nice smooth, dynamic reference premiere response. And finally, best in class finish. So all of these cabinets are hand built, they're hand veneered, they're hand painted if you have the matte black finish. So we want to elevate uh, not only the acoustic experience, but sort of the touch and feel and bring uh, pieces of furniture that can really live in your home. So that's really where we're at with the fives. There's no other, no other product on the market today that sounds like the fives that can, has the connectivity of the fives or really looks like uh, the fives with the premium finishes we offer. True high fidelity. Of course, this is going back to that wide, uh, ultra wide stereo image. You know, a sound bar is great. It sits nice, nicely below your TV, uh, but it's pretty limited in its width and it's pretty limited in its cabinet size and they're pretty limited uh, in their output. So the fives are again, bringing that ease of connectivity that you get with a sound bar uh, bringing it to a more two-channel, discrete hi-fi experience. Again, Tractrix horn loaded. We use that uh, reference premier geometry in the horn. You know, Klipsch has been building kick-ass horn loaded speakers for 75 years. Uh, no reason to stop now. So we want to bring that dynamic sound, that highly efficient sound. These things play very loud, have very efficient amps. Uh, we want to bring that all to 
the TV customer uh, more so than ever before. Of course, HDMI arc. Uh, again, this is, this is really the killer feature on the fives, bringing that one cable, one remote connectivity. Uh, so these will easily, uh, I should say pair or easily connect to any uh, home TV or multimedia system. We really want to bring that clip sound in something other than a sound bar uh, in, a, in a true uh, multimedia all-in-one system. Again, most versatile speakers on the planet. Turntable, built-in phono preamp, and it is a premium phono preamp. Uh, generally better than most of the built-in phono preamps on, on most turntables under uh, you know, a couple hundred bucks or so. Uh, the obviously Bluetooth connectivity, we're using the Bluetooth 5 chip. So uh, latest and greatest in terms of Bluetooth, obviously digital optical, and then your analog connection as well. Oh, by the way, high res audio. So your USB input, your HDMI input, and your optical all decode 192 24 bit. So we're ready to take any files you want to throw at it. Uh, it will decode it with pristine, flawless reproduction of that high res audio. So uh, we're trying to rid, rid the world of over compressed audio uh, in the all in one digital, digital realm. Again, premium materials. I mentioned the real wood veneer on the walnut model, the matte uh, hand painted cabinet on the matte black version, but we're working with real metal accents and hardware. So all the dials, all the knobs are made out of real brushed metal materials, cold to the touch. It's really uh, really premium experience, and of course the subwoofer out. So if you do want to get a little bit, a uh, little bit of that below 30 hertz energy in your room, especially if you're using these for a, uh, a home theater system, we would encourage that. And a, a sub out on these uh, is ideal for that. Now, one thing I'll point out: the subwoofer output actually recognizes when it has a subwoofer plugged into it. So it actually the DSP built into the fives will actually change that roll off curve will go up a little bit to make room for that sub and really open up uh, the mid range and open up the output capability of the fives themselves. So pretty intelligent speakers uh, from the ground up. We also have what we're calling dynamic bass EQ. And some of you might be familiar with this in our R51 PMs. Uh, this is a, a, a pretty intelligent use of DSP actually. So uh, kudos to our engineers, but for those of you that, that aren't aware, uh, our ears are pretty sensitive to mid-range and pretty sensitive to high frequencies. You know, as humans, uh, we are biologically wired to hear predators out in the wild. Uh, we're biologically wired to hear our babies crying, and that's all mid-range, high-frequency sound. So we're not as sensitive to low frequencies, which is fine, but when you're listening to uh, movies or music at a lower output, the bass kind of goes away before anything else. So especially at low volumes, speaker systems that don't have dynamic bass EQ can sound a little bit thin, uh, not as full or not as warm uh, as they would with this dynamic bass EQ. And what it does, it just bumps the EQ in the bass below about 80 hertz uh, at lower volumes. So even if you're listening at night, if you're trying to keep the, um, uh, the sound down for you know somebody sleeping in the next bedroom, something like that, uh, you're still getting a really nice, full, rich sound because of that dynamic bass EQ. And that's all done in the DSP. Uh, that is all uh, done by engineers that are much more intelligent than I am. So that is sort of the overview of what makes the fives the best speakers in the world. Um, but I, we've got a whole, whole host of questions that we will open it up for now, so. Well, okay, before we do that, uh, yes. it's a reminder to post your questions and we will select uh, winners at the end and we will get to some of these questions. But uh, before, before we do that, uh, Leon, you're the first person outside our company uh, to spend some time using and listening to the fives. And uh, the YouTube video is fantastic, I, I watched it. Thank you. I, I was ready to, hey, what? Oh, he got it all. He just got all the points. I mean, it, it was very thorough, but um, I just wanted to ask you real quick, first describe uh, the, your use, the user experience. Well, it was, it was really kind of fun because, you know, the, what I mostly do now is uh, test new products to decide if we're going to carry stuff or just for reviews. 
And these came in and I thought, oh gosh, I got to test another pair of powered speakers. But they seemed pretty special. So I brought them in my office. I put them on a table and said, I'll break them in for a little bit and I'll test them tomorrow morning. I'll just let them run tonight. So I'm sitting there working and they're on at a very low level. And I kept turning my head like, man, these things sound great. <laughs> and uh, so the next day I got them up, put them on stands and uh, they just, they have a huge image. And I, I did find when you add that subwoofer circuitry to kick the bass out, just opens up the mid range so much. I, I highly recommend the subwoofer if you really want to rock out with these guys, because that system is just killer. It's awesome. So uh, I, I was uh, part of the beta testing team. I'm just gonna add this real quick. And uh, my first uh, barrier to it getting placed in the house as I go in the basement and that's where I do a serious heavy duty acoustic testing. I've got pro clips in the basement with my drums and all that. It's where I can get away with just absurd volume. With levels. rocking out. Yeah, for brief, brief periods. You know, I have four ladies in the house. So, you know, I got to be careful when I do that. However, they do come down when it's rocking and good tunes and danceable music. And I had these hooked up, of course, first with the, uh, the base uh, enhancement mode on. And then I noticed, hmm, let's take it to what I call studio flat. That's my term for it, where it's neutral. Right. And then of course, all you do is in insert a, an RCA plug into that sub out and it automatically goes into that mode, whether you have a sub connector or not. So it's smart and you know, don't try to fool it, right? It knows when you plug something in. But then I tried one subwoofer and I was like, wow, you know, these things are keeping up with this uh, big sub over here. And then I hooked up two subs to it. And, you know, you mentioned in your, uh, the video you do, um, which by the way, everybody is at the audio advice site and, and of course YouTube, great video. And you mentioned max output capability. You mentioned 109 decibels. Yes. And you mentioned 50 Hertz, you know, extension. And um, with a sub, uh, you know, you can cover roughly another octave uh, with a sub, good sub that's capable of 25 hertz or, or 20 hertz. And I had two subs hooked up and these kept going to the point where I maxed out the subs. So I actually had a setup down there where, I mean, I, I could easily DJ with the setup for a little party. I mean, you would, I think one of the questions was, one of the funniest questions I saw was, can you piss off the neighbors with these? And the answer would be, yeah so and that's one of the reasons i mean this is a product that in the cliff tradition you know you better just invite them over i think is the, the whole point you know but you know more the other great thing is because they sound so good at low levels you can put a pair right beside your desk and listen all day they sound really sweet I mean, they're just a very sweet sound and yeah there you go <laughs> for your from your voice to my i mean talk about near field you know, these are yeah. on. This is how I'm hearing everything from you guys. And they are in the new super near field multimedia speakers. They're fantastic. They're like wearing headphones. Mike's yeah, they're really a breakthrough. Uh, so yeah. you're, oh, to your point, I, no, that's, I, I did all of my beta testing uh, just at my desk at home. So it was, it was extreme near field listening and they, um, yeah, the dynamic basic hue, especially just well, so I went crazy and put them on speaker stands, good solid speaker stands, had them out from the wall, measured the distances, set them up, and the three-dimensional sound stage they threw out there, especially with a subwoofer, which opens the mid-range up even more, is just incredible. Yeah. So that's actually a good segue to the next question. Um, can you give a little input on uh, music listening versus AV? Man. Leon, Leon or Mike. Yeah, yeah music is fantastic. Um, I, I always have viewed a speaker, if it's great for music, it's going to be awesome for AV, and you've got to be good for music to work with AV. That's mm -hmm. my opinion. And these nail music, so they're awesome for AV. And they, they do have really good mid-range clarity, <clears throat> which makes them great for home theater. Yeah, to, to Leon's point, the, uh, you know, we, we started this company, we, I didn't start the company. The company was started uh, 75 years ago because Paul Klipsch loved live music and he wanted to recreate that listening experience. Now, Roy Delgado, who's our chief uh, commercial 
or, or pro acoustic engineer. So he does all of the cinema speakers. Uh, he was a, a protege of Paul's and he says, even to this day, if it sounds good for music, it's gonna sound good for theater. Uh, that's really what we, what we go by because it's about that mid-range articulation and the dynamics in the mid-range. Um, you know, anybody can do the, the smiley face EQ and have it sound good in a, in a car or, <laughs> or on a sound bar, but uh, when it comes to true hi-fi and true uh, cinema reproduction, it's all about that mid-range and being clear and being dynamic and being detailed. It is, and with those dynamics, that lets you hear the little subtle changes in the actors and actresses' voices, so you're just drawn more in. You hear their emotions in the voice more when you have a great audio speaker for home theater. You just hear all those little subtle things that make you feel like they're in the room with you, talking to you. Totally okay. changes the experience, yep. So I'll announce this real quick. Uh, these are available for um, pre-order uh, exclusively uh, at clips.com and audioadvice.com. They are $7.99 a pair. And then uh, what we're, we're going to go through now are some pretty specific questions. Um, so, you know, you mentioned, Michael, um, you just mentioned a soundbar. And, and actually, just the other day, Leon, we talked about, hmm, you know, somebody who is considering a soundbar, how these could be an option. Uh, we know these are a vast upgrade uh, to a soundbar, but how do they sound compared to Clips Reference or even Reference Premier speakers, for, for that matter. Leon, you or me? Yeah, well, I, I, well, we both take that. So I love the fact you can spread them further apart, which gives you a much bigger soundstage. And the directivity of the horn kind of gives you, I think you can have three or four people on a couch and still get good center fill. I think if you're trying to take a room and have eight people in it spread all around off to the sides a dedicated center channel is probably better but for three or four people these do a fantastic job of for home theater and they just go deeper than any sound bar they, they've just got more more authority to them than a sound bar would have because you've got much bigger cabinet size right if, if you are uh if you're engineering them correctly then speakers with a larger cabinet will have better performance so better low frequency extension, uh, better dynamics, higher output. And obviously with, and, and I love sound bars, you know, I'm the product manager for our sound bars. So, uh, you know, warm spot in my heart for sound bars, not to disparage any sound bars on the market, but something that you get out of a, a larger cabinet is the ability to put out more sound more dynamically. So it's not, uh, you know, a lot of times smaller cabinets, whether they're sound bars or smaller desktop computer systems can sound, can sound kind of compressed because there's not a lot of air that's being moved. The fives with a, even with a relatively compact cabinet still offer way more acoustic volume than any sound bar on the market. So you're getting much, uh, much better extension, much higher output, much better efficiency. Now to Leon's point, they have pretty large, as you can see behind Mark, pretty large 90 by 90 horns. So yeah. it's a really nice dispersion pattern, still controlling that high frequency in that mid range, focusing at the listening area, but that wider dispersion of the 90 by 90 horn actually, thank you, Mark, actually allows for a, a much uh, wider sweet spot. And since, of course, this goes without saying, since you can put them uh, individually on stands and put them any, really any distance from the TV that you prefer, you get a much wider sound stage like we talked about already. So hands down a better experience than a sound bar. Um, it, it's really a, a, an upgrade, not, not just acoustically, but again, we talked about in terms of, of fit and finish and, and how they look in a room. Yes, much so, more so elegant. Okay, so I'm just gonna throw a couple things in there, then we're gonna get into the questions. Yes. So, um, this may address some of the questions because in my office, at our headquarters, I have, uh, a television set up with Blu-ray player, and uh, at any given time, you might see uh, one of the John Wick movies playing on a continuous loop in there. But I, I use it obviously to test dynamics. Um, I've you know been in trouble with HR a couple times over that. But anyway, uh, it's it's great demo. It's those are Atmos soundtracks, so they're the full deal when it comes to dynamics and power and crazy impact and music, everything. And after I did the music test, Leon, you find this interesting. Um, I set them up where, you know, I set them up for a really good music soundstage. And I think you alluded to this where, you know, if they're good for music, they work for 
theater. And then, of course, I I put them on uh, with you know the Blu-ray player, obviously doing the, the downloads through PCM uh, through ARC. And what I could not believe was the dialogue was very centered, and with a clip soundstage. I mean, when you're listening to music, you the focus is really evident. If you have a, a, a female is. vocalist, if you have a vocalist, they're going to be standing in front of you right. a lot. Of it. They get a little freaked out about that sometimes. They're like, wait a minute, um, she's, you know, the vocalist. Same with dialogue in a movie. And then, of course, the panning on the screen was very smooth and precision. But this is what also got me a little bit. And I think this is a, a factor of the controlled directivity, you know, these things focusing into the listening area, and not letting a lot of reflection happen. It really creates the sense of space and even the, what engineers call that transfer function of the surround information. When you're getting that soundstage right, even movie soundtracks, the, the effects seem to move past your head. And I was really shocked about that because first of all, it, I didn't have a subwoofer connected and I heard this surround information and I was like, this is amazing out of two speakers. It's like a multi-channel experience. And, you know, there were a lot of factors involved. I think that their authority with the bass, what Mike mentioned, the clarity in the mid range and the effortlessness, even at the higher yes. volume points, the dynamics. So when you have that combination, it gives a, a level of authority that these soundtracks demand and, other products will fall short, and I think you'll be reminded you're listening to a speaker that's trying maybe a little too hard, where these were just kind of loafing along, and they're like, come on, give me more, turn it up. And I had people come in, into the office, Tommy Jacobs stopped, and he brought some of his new music, and we cranked it up, and he was just like, oh, wow. You know, I think he was pretty happy when he first heard these. And and so that, that first impression, I think it's going to – almost shock people. I, I definitely surprise people, but it, it may almost shock people because of these integrated amps, the digital, all digital technology, the management, all the things that used to be in the analog domain are now in the digital domain, the precision engineering. And what I like to say about the, you can't blow them up. And I have tried. <laughs> I have tried. I mean, you, I did not try that hard, Mark. I didn't try to blow them up. So you did. <laughs> well, your customers will. We got, and, <laughs> and, and you know, the, the, the great thing is they're self-managing, you know, you, you can't blow them up. They won't let themselves self-destruct. So that's, that's really kind of cool, you know, but I think we're going to get into some of the more detailed questions, unless you guys want to make a couple comments before we get right into some of the questions. I, I'd say start on the questions. We have hundreds of them, don't we? Yeah. Let's dive in. Oh man. Okay. So, all right, this is a good one. What was the motivation behind this groundbreaking technology? Was it a curiosity if it could be done, a need in the market that wasn't being met, or just clips showing off how badass it can be and change the market? <laughs> yeah, every, everything we do is about showing off. Um, <laughs> you know, we, we uh, I'm sure you're all familiar, We've, we uh, released the R51 PMs and the R41 PMs a couple, a couple of years ago, last year maybe. Um, and and they've, they've been a huge success. I think it's all about that sort of uh, easy, you know, all-in-one uh, great sounding system. But we, we kind of thought, what, what could this product be if we treated a product like this the same way we treat uh, our heritage speakers or our reference premier speakers, you know, with the same sort of care, not just acoustically, but uh, aesthetically. And that's really where the, the fives uh, I should say that's the the discussion that the fives were were born out of. Now we wanted to uh, offer an, an aesthetic option that was similar to what we do on the heritage line. So real wood veneers, uh, hand painted cabinets, uh, those sorts of touches uh, that you don't get on on these more uh, sort of plastic speakers or you know more budget. Uh, discount speakers. So we wanted a, an all-in-one option for a customer uh, that really wanted to, to or, or had the budget to have a beautiful piece of furniture in their home that just happened to be a speaker. Now, uh, technologically, uh, we know exactly what's going on with soundbars. You know, soundbars have been a great business for us, and they're starting to be 
uh, the ubiquitous sound system in everyone's house. Just like 30, 40 years ago, everyone had a hi-fi system. Now everyone has a sound bar. And sure, you know, we have Bluetooth connectivity on the fives, but really uh, what was important was I don't want to have to go fumbling for a remote every time I want to turn uh, the TV to a different channel or if I want to turn the volume up. So obviously HDMI CEC is a, an integral part of sound bars and we thought, why wouldn't this be a, an important part of a, a powered monitor system as well? So that's really where they came from. You know, so Michael, I have a question on that main. Who came yeah. up with the idea for the badass knobs on the top? I love those. Um, I, I, you know, it's one of those things like uh, Al Gore invented the internet. You, you never know who exactly <laughs> is, is responsible for it. Uh, <laughs> Most, most credits on, I actually saw this, this question pop up uh, asking who designed uh, the fives. They're beautiful and they absolutely are. We have a, um, our head of industrial design is a young man named Tony Martin, who's, uh, I believe he's probably a couple years younger than I am. So he's, he's kind of the whiz kid in the office, but he's uh, re really the guy that comes up with a lot of the, obviously the, the form and the, the finish on, on products, but uh, he's sort of our go-to for uh, user experience as well, or user interface on products. And he does a great job with that. I, I have a question for Leon, a submitted question, the looming question. Uh -oh. uh, is there a significant difference? Well, this is not, this is not the question I, I was going to actually, the one, it, there was a question about optical versus HDMI art, but they're both basically digital connections. Um, not a big difference there. But the, the other question was, there are a lot of questions, I think, of uh, this compared to the sixes. Mm -hmm. um, and that is a question a lot of people have just because, yeah. uh, you know, like they're probably about a generation apart, right? So you both can address that one. That'd be great. Yeah, I'll default to Michael on that one. Yeah. I, I, I haven't had a lot, spent a lot of time with the sixes. It, it's a very good question and it's, it, it's an obvious question, I think. So a, a couple things I want to cover first off. A, a lot of people have said, why, you know, why would I go for the fives? The sixes actually have a larger drive. It's not all about driver size, especially when you're talking about a, a powered speaker because so much of it has to do with amplifier architecture and, and DSP, the EQ that's, that's built into that system. Now, the, the sixes have a, a six and a half inch long throw woofer, but it's a one inch voice coil. The four and a half inch woofer on the fives is actually a one and a half inch voice coil. So it's actually 50% larger voice coil than you get in the sixes. Now, the sixes have a, a pretty similar, um, uh, what am I trying to say? Similar uh, compression driver, high frequency tweeter to the fives but the horn on the fives is completely different. And it's really been massaged and, and redesigned from the sixes to be not only smoother, but certainly more open. And the dispersion is, is much more consistent uh, than you get on the sixes. And frankly, um, we, we don't like to, to call this out necessarily uh, because it's sort of a, a niche product, but the fives uh, will decode 192 24 bit. And the sixes are only 96 K. So, that's a big, big selling feature for a lot of people. Uh, going back to the amp, amp power, amp architecture, I should say, uh, because of the power allocation on the fives versus the sixes, the fives are actually 3 dB louder than the sixes. So if you're looking for a more dynamic experience or just more raw output, the fives are... <clears throat> I wanna back up and, and sort of go back to the six and a half inch driver versus the four and a half inch driver of the fives. So much of driver size is also dependent on cabinet size. And of course the sixes are larger uh, than the fives, but it comes down to uh, which speaker has a more appropriate cabinet volume for that driver. So a lot of times using a smaller driver or using uh, less, of a, less drivers, less number of drivers, depending on uh, the, the product you're talking about, even in a smaller box, if it is an appropriate air volume for the size of that driver, you can get better low frequency extension than you can in a larger box. So something to keep in mind. And again, I think that the fives were really a, a, a ground up redesign of what we thought uh, a powered monitor could be, both from 
an acoustic standpoint and from an aesthetic standpoint. And part of that was, was making a little bit smaller cabinet uh, for maybe the, the customer that was on, a, on the fence between this true two channel system in the fives or a sound bar. So it's, it's really about optimizing uh, performance and output, but still trying to keep it aesthetically pleasing. And part of that was a smaller driver and a smaller cabinet. But in terms so, you know, of Michael, one thing we haven't talked about, the both the fives and the sixes are bi-amped. Yeah. I can't yeah. think of another power speaker on the market that's bi-amped. You even have a proprietary cable to hook them up because you've got a separate amplifier for the woofer and the tweeter in each one. Yeah. Which is what makes them sound so good at all levels. It what is what allows them to crank like crazy and make Mark happy and sound so good at low volume levels for, for work use. Yeah, they just have this effortless sound because they can be by they're by amp. Yep. I know a lot, a lot of you that watched the audio advice video uh, noticed it has a four pin connector cable between the, the powered speaker and the, the passive speaker. And that's because we're actually sending two uh, separate amp signals, uh, one for each driver. Yeah, good, good point, Leon. You know, I, I will emphasize for, emphasize from an engineering standpoint, I mean, total optimization in a closed loop system. In other words, that's engineering talk for the amplifiers are precisely engineered for the drivers. The equalization, everything going to this is specific to this, the characteristic of this high frequency mid range and this woofer. Uh, we've had questions about the fiber composite versus the ceramic Mike, you might want to answer that one. Yeah, so, it, you know, I mentioned the the idea of uh, what, what would a speaker, a powered speaker look like if, if it were based more on our heritage line, aesthetically and acoustically. And, uh, you know, our, our heritage line uses polyfiber woofers, similar to what we're doing on the fives. And, um, you know, a lot of you ask, what, well, why not Ceramitalic? Ceramitalic is a, is a great technology and it's a, a really great sounding, uh, dynamic sounding driver. But in terms of raw efficiency, polyfiber is, is really, um, it really matched up well for what we were trying to do acoustically on this. And I think it, from a story standpoint, because these fall more in line with the heritage uh, series in terms of aesthetics and a little bit acoustics, uh, we wanted to stick with that same woofer material uh, for the fives. Oh, this is a good question uh, from Marty. Uh, I bought my first pair of Klipsches, Fortes in 1986, and they're still front and center in our living room. My question is, as an old school guy, how does my generation keep up with the tech advances, particularly as they relate to different product lines, i.e. the fives? Who wants to take that one? Well, I'm an old school guy. <laughs> These just plug in. <laughs> you basically just uh, have to have a TV that's got an arc on it, which is audio return channel. You connect a cable to it and they work. That's it. It's really quite simple. Um, Although I admit I am a geek and read constantly every day about all the new stuff out there. So maybe that's not a fair answer, but <laughs> they, uh, they're yeah. super simple to set up. You know, there, there are some friends of mine in this industry that are on this uh, and we sold Fortes together in the, uh, the late eighties. And I, I have the Forte threes here and I, I love them and there's nothing like them in the marketplace, but what, and I'm pretty hardcore. People in the company know that. Love me for it, right, Mike? Uh, but I don't really hold, I don't hold back on my feedback. And, and when it comes to products, I mean, we, we take this approach that we need to be the hardest on our product before release to the marketplace. I mean, we put it through its paces to extreme levels because we know our customers are very passionate about their music and their, their gear. I will tell you that the first thing that really uh, leapt out to me when I played music on these was a similar resolution and absolute clarity of mid-range, which the Fortes have. And uh, the Heritage products have. This is Heritage inspired. So it makes perfect sense uh, that if you, if you love that almost unforgiving, revealing nature of our Heritage products, then you will love these. And these are gonna have all the benefits of newer technology, digital domain. Um, I, I know that sounds a little bit cliche or maybe even like a buzzword, but I mean, without digital technology, 
I don't think you can get sound out of these things through a passive design. I mean, that's the advantage. Yeah, you could. There's no way. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. When when we're trying to design a passive speaker, we're it, it's you know trying to cast a very wide net so it works with all types of different amp architectures, all types of different uh, amp voicing, for lack of a better term, or or uh, you know, damping factors and, and impedances. And, and here we're able to, to really custom tune. Um, it, it's like the, I'm from Michigan originally, so I always use car analogies, but it would be like trying to build a, a car with a, a suspension where you didn't know what the engine was going to be. And here we built the whole thing from the ground up and we're uh, able to, to fine tune that suspension and fine tune the engine uh, so it all works well or really optimized to work together as one system. So there's no guesswork, there are no variables. Oh man, so many questions, a little time. You know, we had some basic uh, questions about placement, positioning. And this, the, I would just say this really quick. If you're familiar with the RP600Ns, which have had a lot of great press, um, people may be rediscovering the advantages that a horn-loaded, a well-designed horn-loaded system can provide in a, in a monitor size. Same approach, you know, tow them in slightly. You can adjust that based on your listening position. Maybe go for an equilateral triangle or an isosceles triangle, maybe a little further back than they are apart. Uh, experimentation's the key. Mike will tell you the room has a lot of, yeah. you know, effect on the final sound. But space them out, you know, they do have a 15 foot cord, so it gives you plenty of width in a typical listening environment. And then how you tow them in, you know, to your taste. If you like classical music and you want a huge stage, maybe you don't tow them in so much. If you want to reproduce a jazz trio and you want that center musician right in the middle, tow them in a little more, you know. That's the beauty of these things. Um, you can actually dial them in for your listening space. It really, the control directivity gives you some really cool advantages of how you tailor the sound stage. It's unique to Klipsch, but have fun with it. You know, there, there are some guidelines, but there are no hard rules um, on how you set these up and really max. And as far as the height, you know, I've got them on stands here, or at least it's Belagetti stands, but they're, they're really for small satellites. I just use this for this here. I, I, I agree with, uh, Leon, get some solid speaker stands that are rigid and uh, well damped, and you, you'll be amazed at um, how these would appeal to an audiophile. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I had them on 24 inch stands, and I would, I would say everything that Mark said. And if you really want to get the best performance, get out your tape measure and make sure they're the exact distance off the back wall, the exact same toe in. Because when you do that, that image is just really good. By the way, I do have these hooked up via USB with my out, the output of my PC uh, 24192, yeah. and you know you guys are right here. And uh, some interesting videos are online. I'm I'm, I'm not going to open a can of worms right now, but uh, some people have measured our larger floor standards at a near distance, and you know we make these measurements at the optimal distance. You know the typical listening distance, which is not one meter; it's a it's a few meters. <laughs> but you know what's amazing about these is I've listened to them at, you know, from 20 feet away, but right now they're like 12 inches from my ears and they sound absolutely fantastic, balanced and sweet and natural. So these have the ability to be a near field monitor in all respects. That's pretty neat. Yeah, they have good point, Mark. dynamics to crank up as well. So uh, one of the questions, I think we've covered it was how, how do you, what do you, how would you explain um, the audio quality of a, a wired, you know, passive speaker versus these new powered speakers. Man, uh, yeah. you know, we we just covered this. It, it kind of goes back to the to the DSP and and being able to optimize the drivers and optimize the system based off uh, the engine that's driving them, right? The amplifier and and the EQ and and a lot of it goes into um, being able to get as much output. In those speakers as possible uh, through a limiter. So there's there's really no guesswork with these types of speakers. Uh, powered monitors is what I mean. Whereas a passive system, you know, you might need to swap an amp or two uh, until you get a sound you like or a sound that's appropriate for the speaker. So yeah, really so everything is contained. You know the quality. The the speaker is a given quantity. So you design the amp to match that. 
and there's no passive crossover. It's all electronic crossovers. So it's, that gives it just an effortless sound. Yeah. Um, yeah. When you start making, yeah, you know, if, if you made corner horns this way, they'd be 40 grand <laughs> you know, if you did it that way. Leon likes to sell solid state quality amps and tube amplifiers as well to the yes. you know, yeah. that crowd. So he has fun doing that. We're taking away a little bit of this fun, but this could be a different customer, I think is the point. Yes. Exactly right. Yeah. You know, it's it's uh, it's akin to asking, you know, what, why do you build an amplifier into a sound bar? Because it's just easier. And the, the type of, of customer that's going to buy a sound bar doesn't want to have to, to buy their sound bar and bring it home and then say, wait, I need to buy another box to get this thing to work. It's a, it's a similar, um, uh, similar customer with the fives. And, and frankly, these are, are, are great two channel audiophile speakers uh, because of that optimization. But part of it just goes back to trying to reach a different customer than the more traditional audiophile. Mike, I'm cracking up because I just saw one of these questions I cannot repeat. Um, oh these, no. These are some, there are some funny questions. Oh boy. Oh my goodness gracious. Um, so uh, another really, I think a good question was, um, you know, when it comes to the subwoofer connection, so I, I will, we did talk about that earlier, but um, just maybe a quick clarification. So we talked about on the remote, if you hold it down, you can engage the bass enhancement mode, hold it again, and it makes them flat, right? right. Natural, yeah. you know, so whatever your preference. Those modes are also active with a sub connected. So you can have the bass enhancement at low volume with a sub connected or keep them neutral with the sub connected. So my max output mode <laughs> with the two subs was I had them in the flat mode and then I just had the subs going. And then these of course have that additional headroom and uh, quite stunning in the output level of such a relatively compact <laughs> setup. Yeah. So that was a pretty good question. I just thought, you know, that, that's a neat feature but we do put that control in your hands to turn it on and off. Yeah, yeah, good question. Mike, I know you've seen some of these questions as well. Were there any that stood out to you that you wanted to address? Or Leon, you've seen these, some of these questions also. Yeah, I've seen, they've been popping up. The photo stage is just moving magnet. It doesn't support moving right. coil. Right. Um, I've seen several people ask what the warranty is, and I actually don't know, but what is the warranty? I'm about to lie on live television. Um, the band. Generally, our... <laughs> The answer is there is a warranty. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> For more warranty information. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's a that's a good uh, question. Sorry, guys. No, come on, Leon. Love it. Put me on the spot. Uh, I will. That's awesome. <laughs> Not the warranty guy. What do I look like, a lawyer? It, it, they may guarantee to do this. As far as. You know, I, I said, I just said earlier, you can't blow them up. So who needs a warranty right now? Uh, it is a, what, sorry, the warranty, this is why I'm confused. The warranty is one year on the amp, but three years on the woofer cabinet and other non-electrical mechanics from the date of purchase. Okay. But actually we, um, I'll say this, we have a, a generally pretty low warranty return rate uh, because our, our speakers can handle a lot. Most of the time when you have a, a warranty issue with a loudspeaker, whether it's ours or another manufacturer, uh, it has to do with the speaker not pairing well with the amp, whether the amp is underpowered, sometimes it's because the amp is overpowered, that's not usually the case, uh, or there's an impedance matching issue. Obviously with these all-in-one systems, it's all, all that math, all that work is done for you. So uh, on, on our past, or I should say on our powered speakers, uh, very, very minimal warranty return issues because of that, because everything is, is uh, done at the factory, we'll say, all the math. Oh, here's some good questions. Um, yeah. Firmware, is there a way to update it? Um, is that something that people may anticipate down the road? App control, things like that? Yeah, so um, 
a couple things. So the firmware updates, um, Bluetooth and uh, I should say Bluetooth updates that actually come from Bluetooth uh, for your device that are, those are all updated over the air. So usually those are updated with um, you not generally knowing as a consumer. Um, uh, MCU or, or we'll say AMP or, uh, or the five firmware we'll call it, uh, that is all done over USB stick. So uh, without giving too much away, we are working on app integration for these. Uh, we are not advertising it because, uh, I mean, there's only just between us 540 close friends. Um, we're looking to launch an app, app that would uh, give step-by-step -step instructions on how to do that. You essentially plug your email address into the app. We email you the firmware you need. You dump it on a USB stick. You plug it into the fives and it pretty much does the work for you. So very easy. Um, you know, we're, we're trying more and more to get over the air updates, uh, but with sort of the, um, uh, the guesswork around the app compatibility in the early development stages of this product, we, we didn't want to put all our eggs in that basket. So right now we're just uh, going to make it as easy as possible uh, for firmware updates. Here's to easy as possible. It's, it's almost 10 till, uh, it's almost five o'clock central time. Cheers, everybody. It's almost Friday, uh, but um, a couple good little questions. Oh, I just wanted to mention real quick, you can purchase these for $7.99 at audioadvice.com at clips.com. Let me also point out that we have been uh, at these higher end shows uh, like Rocky Mountain Audio Fest, and often there is a showcase of an affordable audio file system. What was the price point, Mike? Was it $1,200, $1,500? We've done some of those, right? Uh, I didn't, I don't understand what you're asking. Well, the, the point is we, we've been part of some of these affordable audio file systems oh. showcase at Rocky Mountain Audio Fest. Yeah, yeah. And the reason I'm bringing that up is at 799, you, you got your high end amplifier. I mean, it's all built in, you're ready to go. And, and this is an amazing price for when you consider all the benefits, technology and performance built into these things. Yeah. It's, I, it's groundbreaking. I don't want to, um, this is not meant to disparage, but we, we got a, a very good question about Keth. And Keth was kind of the, um, really the groundbreaker in terms of, of powered monitors in the space, uh, you know, with the, the LS50s and the, the LSX line. And I, I lived with the LSXs in my office for months while we were developing these um, because they're, they're really the standard at, at this price point. And um, deserves every penny they've made in the powered monitor space, but this is a, a much uh, more affordable, in, to my ears, higher performance option uh, than anything else out on the market today. Leon, we've been talking a lot. Why don't, why don't you give us a little bit more of your wisdom and insight? I mean, you've been doing this for a, a good many years and you've seen a lot of products come and go. And I love how you get excited about new products. I, I think that's the key in this industry. But, you know, your approach, I'm just curious to, to hear more thoughts from you. Well, it's, um, I think for a lot of people, if you're trying to simplify things, it's a great option. I, I mean, you could buy a pair of RPM 600s, a high powered amplifier, and uh, that's going to sound really good too. It's just going to cost about twice as much to get that same sound level, I think. And it won't have HDMI arc. But if you do that, you, you know, it's, it's all really where you want to take your system and how involved you want to get with it over time. Um, I think these are going to make a lot of people happy beside their TV. The, the other thing that's kind of cool is if your TV's got music apps on it, browsing the TV while playing the music is, is kind of fun to do. Um, <clears throat> but they're, um, they're, they're going to shake some stuff up. They're, they're very good. And um, I, the, the thing that just threw me is how sweet and warm they sound at low volume level. That just blew me away. Where most people listen yes. most of the time. Yeah, because you typically crank it up to piss off the neighbors for two seconds, and you turn it back down again, usually. Yeah. 
yeah, yeah. But the clarity at low volume, I mean, the reason people upgrade their sound for a super thin TV, the reason, you know, if people are listening to more music, they're streaming more, um, you know, they're consuming more music. And of course, I, you know, Kova's title, MQA, talking to Ken Forsyth and him telling me all about the high res formats and, you know, Dragonfly has done a great job. You can learn a lot about Dragonflies at your site. Great videos from you guys, but this having it essentially built in, you know? So, yeah. I mean, we're, we're able to address people that really care about high resolution. Then we also have people who they just want to hear their music and they want it to be easy to Mike's point. It um, is, but, but still, if you're really into it, a pair of Forte threes, a great amplifier, a good separate turntable, that is a far better musical experience, but it costs and, a lot. Yes. But however, your customer, right? You, you have those customers. This could be a great solution for their- For the office. The, yes. the office, the, you know, uh, a, a den, other rooms in the house. Exactly. I mean, if they're discriminating like Mr. Barato, you know, if you have great sound in one room, you want it in all your rooms. <laughs> you right? do. It gets very addictive. I can tell you that. And you want it in the car. True. Oh, yeah. Okay. So uh, anybody up for a little toast? Wet your whistle a little bit? I've been talking too much. That's for sure. Mike, I want to hear more from you. Cheers. Oh, cheers, everybody. Uh, we are coming up to the uh, top of the hour, bottom of the hour. I don't know. Uh, the end of the hour, we'll say. Uh, I want to cover a couple... Uh, a couple more questions before we um, uh, before we end. We had a question. Uh, do most newer TVs have HDMI art? Yes, absolutely. I know there's there's some confusion out there. Uh, we're talking a lot about HDMI art. Art stands for audio return channel, which means you can plug a source into your TV and it will actually send the audio back to whatever that source is. And HDMI art is used a lot in sound bars to connect that audio. Uh, again, used in the fives. So you can connect via an HDMI cable to your TV. HDMI also allows for CEC, which is a control protocol. That means you can use your TV remote to control the speakers. So one cable, one remote, high res audio, can't beat it. Yeah, that's the great, ARC has been around for several years. So just about any you know, TV, I'd say probably four to five years old is gonna have ARC. And with the CEC control, you don't have to do anything. The remote just works. It just plug it in, it goes. Plug it in, it works. <laughs> that is what people have been waiting for, <laughs> you yep. know, to get great sound and a remote, one remote. Who, who thought of that? It only took them, what, 15 years? <laughs> yes, I remember the early horrors of HDMI. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, and uh, somebody... Somebody in the in the chat asked about handshake issues with HDMI. It's it's really not an issue. Handshake no, issues not anymore. No, no. They, they really, they, to your point, Leon, they were sort of a legacy issue. You might still have them with like 4K HDR, uh, depending on video devices, but especially with audio, it's really not an issue. Right. Hmm. Well. Hmm. What Oh, we need to pick winners for the best question. I think I have one. Uh, I'm waiting on the second one. Uh oh. So uh, got some people yeah. behind the scenes that are the. Yeah. Uh, the we have a panel. We have a panel behind the scenes. So uh, it's good stuff. I'm pretty excited about the, the one that I know of so far. Okay. Uh, oh, somebody asked. Okay, you guys talk about power, detail, emotion. Those are pretty powerful words, first of all, and. You know, we all believe in the power of the demo. Leon, Mike, every day, you know, the sound, keepers of the sound. I mean, that is, that's real and, and delivering that experience. How do these make you feel, Leon? They make you feel good and you want to play more music. That's how they make you feel. Yeah. Very makes you, and you tend to want to crank it up too. <laughs> yeah. That's always good. They they make me feel the same way that I felt when I got uh, my 8,000 Fs that I have now. I wanted to go back and listen to music that I've been listening to for years and years and see what I could pick out uh, that was different. 
know, it makes you want to listen. Yeah, there, there are some things that, you know, in doing this for a long time, you hook something up and it immediately starts playing. And you know, right off the bat, this is really good. These are something special. Yeah. And uh, that's what these are. Good. We are very glad you think so. We think so too. Well, because I've tested other things and you can tell immediately they're not very special. <laughs> and well, I, I think it's also part of the reason why, uh, you know, people who have owned Klipsch in the past, and I, I know there are a lot of people here that have, and, you know, it's a unique approach. Somebody asked about our design philosophy. How did we resolve that in these? And, you know, this is a quick training for our, our customers. High efficiency, low distortion, the inverse relationship. That's what Paul Klipsch was all about. The result is fantastic dy dynamic range, effortless dynamic range, Klipsch is known for that. Coarse, flat, extended power response, frequency response is related to controlled reactivity, controlling the sound as it's released into the room, not allowing reflections to alter the in-room response. You know, high frequencies are reflected. Room modes can alter your frequency response in your listening position. The horns control that, minimize the effects, and they give you a great in-room response. So the rest of our design philosophy really is about flat, real world frequency response. So these deliver all of those things. It is a klipsch. And that is one of the questions we ask in the building um, when we're going through the development process, right, Mike? We have to answer that question, that question of, is it a klipsch? Which means what, in your opinion, Mike? Oh, man. Um, uh, I saw what WW uh, PK do and a lot of it is that it's it's using those design philosophies and those acoustic technologies that that Paul Klipsch started developing 75 years ago and really bringing them into the future and bringing them to a new customer so um, yeah to, Mark to your point we when we get ready to launch a new product the, the product management team uh, the the executives uh, our, Paul Jacobs our CEO um, you know, all of our sales leads from all, all around the world, they usually sit in a room and we can tell within five or 10 seconds if something sounds like a klipsch. And that's what gives it the yes or no. And it's that, that dynamic sound, like you're at the movie theater, or you're at the, the jazz club or the, the rock show. And um, it, it's, a, it's a visceral experience that you don't really get with any other speaker brand. Thanks for all the great questions, everybody. Leon, well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much, Mike. Thank you so much. Really yeah. thorough, fantastic, revealing answers. And we have so many more questions. I think that this, there might be a part two. I'm just guessing. I don't know. But there were so many questions that, you know, I could, Tons go, on. Of questions. I could go on for another hour. I don't think Joe will let me. But I'm going to do a quick shout out to the engineering team. Um, you know, I'm not going to, I don't think I'm going to get everybody. Mike, help me out. Chris Perrins, Matt Spitznagel, all of these guys, you know, these are the people behind the scenes. Vlad Grodzinski. Go ahead. Well, you mentioned Chris already. Man, all the, Craig Campbell, all those guys. Yeah, a lot of hard work behind the scenes to bring the wizardry together. And with Paul Klipsch in mind, you know, that with this product that bears his name, make him happy. So uh, we're going to pick the winners, okay? So, the <laughs> okay. All right. All right, winner number one is Eric Wilborn. His question was like four questions, okay? <laughs> the motivation behind this groundbreaking technology was a curiosity if it could be done, a need in the market that needed to be met, or just clip showing off how badass it could be in James market. Eric, they can be smart, man. Congrats, congrats. congrats. <laughs> okay, and uh, okay, this other one, this is a little more succinct this one, okay, but it was a question that got our attention. <laughs> Will the fives piss off my neighbors? <laughs> <laughs> Winner goes to Mike Henry, all right? Congrats, you guys. You, Congratulations, Eric. Eric. Eric and Mike, enjoy, and uh, you, gotta, you gotta earn this shirt, so you gotta give us some testimony, you know, as it happened. So uh, thank you all for joining us today and uh, to learn more about the fives or to pre-order a pair, 
uh, visit Klipsch.com and of course, audioadvice.com, our great partners in the South there in the Carolinas. Uh, keep listening, everybody. Stay safe. Have fun. Listen to your music. You know, crazy times, but um, music brings us together. It keeps us together. Music and home theater is a great way to uh, de-stress. <clears throat> yes. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Thank you very much for joining. Thank you, Leon. Thank you, Mark, for hosting. Have a great night, everybody. Have a great weekend. Cheers. See you all.